During World War II, in the Moroccan desert, a mysterious man falls from the sky using a parachute. He is alone and he carries nothing but a small backpack. The man takes out his parachute and walks in the desert dunes until a car appears to give him a ride. It seems as if he is expecting an ambush because as the car drives closer, he goes to grab his gun. When the driver pulls up beside him and doesn't shoot, he enters the car. The man's name is Max Vadden, and he's a Royal Canadian Air Force pilot who is in Morocco as a spy. The driver stares at him with suspicion, but Max doesn't say anything to him. His attention is on a suitcase that came with the car. Inside the suitcase, there are clothes and a small bag full of passports from different countries with the man's picture on it. And in a secret compartment in the suitcase, there are guns and some money. He briefly counts the money and the driver hands him a wedding ring, telling him that his wife is going to be using a violet dress and to search for the hummingbird. Later that day, Max dresses up in a suit and goes to a bar that is full with Nazi soldiers. He looks for the woman in the violet dress and soon finds her on a table drinking with Nazi sympathizers. The woman feels someone is watching her and turns to look. She's a beautiful, elegant brunette, and when their eyes meet, she smiles and runs at him as if they have known each other for years. The woman's name is Marion Bosager, and she's part of the French resistance. They're in Morocco for a very important and secret mission, to eliminate a German ambassador. Max and Marion have never met before, but as spies, they act like a couple deeply in love. Marion introduces Max to her table, and they soon leave under the excuse of going home to have a moment for themselves after so long away. In the car, on their way to Marion's apartment, they share a cigarette and appropriately introduce themselves. Max asks Marion what happened to her previous team, they had all died on a mission, but it's a sore topic for Marion. Max notices that the Germans with whom Marion is working at the embassy seem to like her. Marion replies that she likes them, that's how she keeps them from discovering that she's a spy, by keeping the emotions real. In the apartment, Marion tells Max that his Parisian accent isn't good and they need to work on it because she told everyone her husband is from Paris. They are going to a party in a few days that will have Parisians, which can be a huge problem if they notice that Max doesn't have their accent. In fact, he has an accent from Quebec, his hometown. Marion tells Max to sleep on the roof because that's what Moroccan husbands do after they are intimate with their wives, and Max accepts it. It's a quiet, peaceful night and he's smoking a cigarette when Marion appears wearing only her nightgown and rope. She informs Max that she'll stay with him for some time so that her nosy neighbors don't suspect anything. Marion tries to get Max to talk to her, because he seems unwilling to do much to pretend, and he tells her what he wants to do after the war. Then, Marion asks him to kiss her before she leaves. Next day, Marion teaches Max to speak more like a Parisian and tells him more about his character. A reserved, Catholic man who likes to wear expensive clothes. As they get ready for the day in separate rooms, Max tells her that a friend of his, Guy, who was saved by Marion once, told him that she was beautiful and good. While he's telling her that, he peeks at her changing clothes more than once. They go to a cafe and Marion greets many people passing by. She's very popular around the place, especially with the German soldiers. One of the officials had already interrogated Max, and Max gets anxious that the man is going to recognize him. Not willing to take any chances and ruin their mission, Max follows him when he goes somewhere. He catches the official calling the police and eliminates him before he can say anything. Later that same day, they meet a couple of Marion friends and Max notices she is the light of the party. Everyone is mesmerized by her, including Max. Marion asks Max to dance when a Parisian man approaches their table, and he's impressed by her quick thinking. As they slow dance, Max can't take his eyes off the beautiful woman in front of him. Back at the apartment, Max asks Marion again what went wrong on her mission in Paris, and she tells him she was forced to run away. He notices a nosy neighbor watching them and hugs Marion closer, whispering in her ear that they were being watched. Marion is caught off guard and looks uncomfortable by his proximity. She quickly tells him goodnight and leaves. In the following scene, Max and Marion are in the desert practicing their shooting. Marion has really good aim, but she has some issues with the safety lock, which both impresses and worries Max. Marion is offended by his mistrust of her skills and tells him that she can use a knife if it's needed. When they are back at the apartment, as retaliation for him testing her skills, Marion tries to seduce him. Max asks her what she was doing and she explains that she was testing if his safety lock is secured. Max retorts by saying that people in their field who get intimate end up being eliminated. Marion replies that the issue is not being intimate, but catching feelings. They get their invitations to the ambassador's ball, which is all they need to complete their mission. Marion gets anxious before the party, because if something went wrong, there would be no second chances. Max invites her to see the sunrise in the desert, and there they share again their plans for when the war is over. Max says he wants to have a ranch in Medicine Hat, a place with rolling hills and clear water that is special for him. Marion doesn't know what to do after the war, not after so many years spent fighting. They get in the car to go back and, in a moment of vulnerability for both of them, they get intimate. The day of the ball arrives. Marion is nervous, but Max is calm. He tells her she's beautiful and kisses her in front of everyone. 
When the clock strikes eight, their target arrives. Their plan is to create a distraction with a bomb, and then strike the ambassador before anyone can realize they are being attacked. Max quickly eliminates the man and they shoot any soldier that appears. Marion shoots one of her friends, but she hesitates to shoot his wife, who was also a good friend of hers. They run away and escape before anyone catches them. When they are in the car leaving, Max invites Marion to go back to London with him to become his wife. Marion accepts. Some time later, they get married in a simple ceremony and have a baby girl named Anna. A year later, they are living a calm and peaceful life in a suburban neighborhood in London. One day, Max receives a phone call that will change his life forever. He discovers that his wife is not who he thought she was, and that Marion Bosager was in fact a member of the French Rebellion, though she was captured and eliminated in 1941. Her identity was given to a German agent that looked similar to her, and the agent went to Morocco to work as a spy. The German ambassador they eliminated was actually a dissident, and Hitler himself wanted him eliminated. Max cannot believe that Marion, the mother of his child, has lied to him about such a crucial thing. The evidence for her treason is strong, and his superiors order him to keep her in London for 72 hours so that they can find all her allies and eliminate them. Max has no other option but to accept. When he's home, he will receive a message with incorrect information and leave it on a note so that Marion can find it. If the information passes, they prove Marion is a German spy and Max will have to eliminate her himself. If he doesn't, his integrity will be put into question and he will be eliminated for treason. Max goes home disturbed and wondering if he has been played this whole time by Marion. He tries to act as normal as possible when he gets home. He wants to give Marion the benefit of doubt, but he can't stop thinking about the repercussions if it's true that she's a German agent. Marion tries to get intimate with him but he isn't comfortable with her anymore. They are interrupted by the false phone call and he writes the message on a notepad at his bedside table. Meanwhile, Marion is still trying to get intimate with him which disturbs him to his core. He starts remembering every single thing she said when they were working together that could be used against her. He can't sleep and tries to get comfort from his baby daughter, telling himself that it is not true and everything will be okay. Next day, Max wakes up with a plan. He's going to investigate Marion himself. He takes off the note from the notepad and goes visit the man who Marion had saved before, Guy. He asks him if the Marion who saved him was the same in his wedding picture, but Guy is blind and can't see the picture to confirm it. However, he gives Max another clue, a man called Paul de Lamer, who also met Marion back in France. Paul is not in England, so Max has to ask another soldier to take Marion's picture back to Paul for him to answer if it's her or not. When Max meets Marion again, she's suspicious of his sketchy behavior. He was supposed to be at home with her and their daughter on his free weekend, and now she thinks he may have a mistress. Later that day, there's a party at their home and it's filled with officials and soldiers. Max sees Marion talking to a strange man and thinks it's strange. His co-worker finds him and tells him something that gives him pause. There's a big promotion that will be given to a commander, and it can be Max, but before the mission is appointed to the person, he will be tested. His co-worker doesn't know how the testing is going to happen, but advises Max not to take it. Now Max has even more suspicion on his plate. His superior goes to his place and tells Max that he disobeyed his orders of not getting involved in Marion's investigation. Not only did he visit and disturb Guy, the soldier he had given the picture to was eliminated because he waited too long for an answer that never came. Marion interrupts their conversation and asks Max what is going on that he seemed so upset about. Max lies to her and says just some kid that passed away in the war. Marion doesn't believe him at all, and for the first time since they got married, Max told her that something related to the war happened, but that he can't talk about it with her. Now it's Marion's turn to be upset. Max isn't going to give up his investigation. Marion goes back to the house and when Max sees her again, she's talking to a man Max recognized from the bar they had gone to earlier. He had seen the man when he was walking into the bar and now he's at his place talking to his wife. It's too much of a coincidence for Max. His head is full of uncertainties and doubts regarding Marion and his superiors. He questions Marion about who the man is, and she tells him he's a jeweler that is trying to sell her a diamond brooch. Max doesn't believe her for a second and goes after the man. When he approaches the man, the jeweler asks him if his wife had changed her mind, to which Max asks if it's about the earrings, to try and catch the man lying. The jeweler answers that he was trying to sell a brooch, exactly as Marion told him. She interrupts them and tells the jeweler that they are broke and can't buy the brooch. The man leaves. A bombing starts and Marion leaves to get their daughter from her bedroom. His superior approaches him again and tells him to leave the investigation alone, that by Monday they will know for sure, and that it's not a game. Max questions if his superior would know if it was a game, but his superior doesn't say anything, and leaves. One airplane from the bombing is shot and comes in the direction of Max's house. Max runs towards Marion and his daughter to protect them, but the airplane doesn't hit their house. A nervous Marion tells Max to stay with Anna and her, to forget the war for one day at least and be with his family. Max accepts it, but the next day, he leaves to continue his investigation. He just can't be with Marion until he finds out the truth about her. 
he goes against his superior's order, grabs an airplane and flies all the way to France. He wants to meet with Paul Delamere to show him Marion's picture. Paul is in prison, drunk, so Max invades the prison to show him the picture. He interrogates a drunk Paul about Marion, and at first he contradicts himself by saying she has brown eyes. However, as Max pushes him for more information, he tells Max that Marion is the life of the party, and that she paints beautiful watercolors. Max is relieved that he had been right the whole time and Marion wasn't a German agent. A group of German soldiers arrive close to the prison. But before Max leaves, Paul adds a piece of information that contradicts himself again. He says Marion plays the piano, but Max's wife doesn't know how to play. Again, doubts start crawling all over Max's mind. There's no time to think about them, though, because the German soldiers start pounding on the prison's door to buy cigarettes from the guard there. The guard goes to open the door and yells at the soldiers that they were invaded. A shooting starts between the Germans and the French soldiers that came with Max to the prison. They win the fight and Max goes back to London. There, he tells Marion that he needs her to come with him and brings her to a bar. Marion is confused with his behavior but she goes with him. At the bar, there is a piano, and Max demands that Marion plays it for him. He wants her to play a song that Paul remembered her playing when he met her the first time. Marion starts getting nervous. Max tells her that Marion Abosager played that song in a French bar in 1941. Marion stares at the piano for a moment, then she closes the lid. She doesn't know how to play. She tells Max that she knows the story, and that Marion was a very brave woman. She starts crying and apologizing, saying that the Germans found her and threatened Anna. She thought they would never find her again. Max gets violent and almost hurts Marion, but she starts sobbing and he hugs her. Max asks her if their relationship is real, if she loves him. Marion repeatedly says that she loves him. Max also starts crying and tells her that they can leave, go to Switzerland or Peru. Marion says that they will find them, but if they stay, Max will be forced to eliminate her, and if he refuses, they both will be eliminated. Max goes to get Anna and discovers that her new nanny, a kind old lady, is actually a German agent that used Anna as collateral for Marion. Max eliminates her and grabs Anna. The jeweler that was trying to sell a diamond brooch to Marion is also a German agent, and Max eliminates him too. Max takes his family to a plane hangar to steal an airplane and fly away from London. He leaves Marion in the car with Anna while he tries to turn on the plane, but the plane isn't working. While he tries to make it work, a bunch of soldiers, including his superior, appear. His superior tells him it's over, that they know Marion is a traitor. Max tries to reason with his superior, saying that they threatened his daughter and his wife had no choice. Marion watches it unfolding and realizes that there's no way that they are going to get out of that situation alive. Max will be charged with treason and she is a German spy. Anna will become a war orphan. For that reason, she makes up a plan to spare Max, at least. She tells Max she loves him and asks him to take care of Anna. Then, she Max stares at his wife's unmoving body, speechless. In a matter of 72 hours, his entire life crumbled to pieces right in front of him. A group of soldiers appear to arrest Max, but his superior avoids it by saying that Max shot an enemy agent and did his duty as a commander. In the ending scene, it's shown that Marion was already suspicious that Max had found out about her, so she wrote her daughter a letter to say goodbye. In the letter, Marion writes that the time they spent together as a family was the happiest time of her life, and that she hopes Max will be able to go to Medicine Hat when the war is finally over. Max fulfills his desires to have a ranch and raises Anna by himself with the view of the mountains and pastures.